Thunder Report from 1077, the franchise. Greetings, Thunder fans. The Oklahoma City Thunder advanced to their third Western Conference final in four years with a 104-98 Game 6 and Series winner against the Clippers tonight in Los Angeles. Kevin Durant scored 39 points, and Oklahoma City's bench outscored the Clippers 35-17 as the Thunder win the semifinal series four games to two. Game 1 of the Western Conference Finals begins at top seed San Antonio Monday night at 8. The franchise will begin reports from San Antonio and Thunder practices midday on Monday. Now let's go to the the podium from Staples Center in Los Angeles and hear first from Thunder coach Scott Brooks. Just much respect for Coach Doc and their players. Obviously they've been through a lot um, but they still competed and, and it was a hard fought series and give them a, a lot of credit because what they've gone through is, is not easy. It's not easy for the entire league and particularly their team, that to go through those, that those were disturbing things. Uh, but I, I thought tonight's game was um, something that we've done all year. You know, we've all stuck together and, and found ways to win. We weren't making uh, a lot of shots. Kevin and Russell did not have a good shooting first half, but they, but they competed. But I thought the other guys jumped in and, and stepped in and, and held down the fort and, you know, made it a respectable uh, deficit that we had to overcome just eight points. And then the second half, obviously, um, they got hot, did a great job of executing. It's something that we've been um, working on, and we've been a, you know, a very good offensive team all year, high percentage shooting team, and I thought our shots were much better in that fourth quarter. Front row. Uh, Coach, what did you say to the players, especially in the second half, to keep them focused um, as they battled back uh, after coming off a sluggish first half? Well, the first thing I, I said, uh, I, I loved where we were Path. I love the position we were at, only down eight. Uh, I, I don't know the exact numbers. Kevin and Russell, I think they were one for 12 or one for 11. We're down eight. Everybody has to chip in. I said, just keep plugging away. Something that we've talked about all year, maximum effort, every possession, multiple effort, every possession, and just keep playing with the pass and, and, and finding offense through our team. And I thought they did a good job of, of being patient, being disciplined, and, and playing for one another in that second half at a high level. On the left, row two. Uh, Dean Blevins, News 9. Coach, can you give us an update on Surge? And then also, do you believe that maybe it was the experience that led to maybe some poise down the stretch that you had this time around that could have been a big factor? Um, well, you know, we were um, we were only two days younger in game four, so we had some experience back then. Um, I thought Nick stepped up. You know, Nick, Nick <laughs> the crazy thing is Nick's taken a thousand shots from the corner from the three-point line and hasn't had many opportunities this season, but I thought that was a big bucket. That was a big bucket, and I, I love the fact that we trusted him. We see him every day work. And it's nice that our guys rewarded him with a nice, clean pass and a belief in him he was going to make that shot. We've been we've been good all year. You know, we knew going into the first series it was going to be tough. We knew going into this series it was going to be tough. And can I tell you guys something? Next series is going to be tough. It's what NBA playoffs. We're all fighting for one thing, and it's an important thing for all of us. Serge, you know what? I don't know yet. I, I just I looked at him. I said, you all right? And he just, you know. He said, that's what he said. <laughs> you know, Serge and I have, sometimes we just talk with our hands, and he said this. Yes, yeah, so I, I think it would be all right. We, I, we won't know until tomorrow. Scott, um, the Clippers had had some success um, offensively for maybe five straight quarters. What changed in the second quarter defensively for you guys? We just had to keep playing. You know, the, the, the thing is that people forget I don't know if they forget, they just don't acknowledge it enough that they're a very good offensive basketball team. They have shooters all over the floor. They have one of the best point guards of manipulating the game and, and ball screens. And they have two rollers that can finish a thousand feet above the rim. They're not easy to guard. But the only way to guard them is doing it every time. You can't, you can't relax and you can't worry about the last play if they, if they did score on you. You just got to do it every time. And we tell our guys that. Reboot the computer every time down the court. Don't worry about the last play. Focus on this play. Stay in the moment. Coach, you guys staged back-to-back double-digit comebacks to finish off the series. What does that say about your team, and what do you think they'll be able? How do you think they will? They'll be able to handle the challenge of a team like San Antonio in the next round. Well, we have good leadership. Russell and Kevin have led us for a lot of years. 
Uh, we've never talked about um, not being able to lead at a young age because they've been leading this team for five or six years. Um, but they lead, and our guys do a great job of, of supporting them and, and helping them and putting them in in positions to um, for all of us to have success. The the, the un, unsung heroes on our team are are our bigs. I say it all the time, and, I, and I'm going to continue to say it. They set screens. They, they 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 do a lot of things to put us in a position to win basketball games. We won a lot of games this year because of our bigs really competing and putting us in positions to have success. Bob Barry K for the NBC in Oklahoma City. Scott, can you expound on Kevin and Russell? Kevin, it appeared, found his stroke, and Russell did it a completely different way tonight versus the last game. You know, Russell, I thought Russell was solid. You know, he, he didn't have a, a, a good shooting night, and he had 12 assists, and he had a lot of free throws because he was attacking. And Kevin, Kevin got, got hot in the second half. But our big set a good, uh, good job of setting them up, and I give Kevin credit. He he did a good job of getting low and, and setting up, and not, not letting them hold hold him and, and letting them um, get away with that. He was really uh, trying to get separation from from their hands, and I thought he did a good job in that in that second half. And Russell did a good job of finding them on time and on target. Coach Dan Hardy, talk to me, Sports Radio. I know you want to savor the win. Congratulations. Uh, as you transition into playing the Spurs, their bench is going to cause some some issues, if you will, because they have a strong bench. How do you plan on uh, adjusting to their bench and the points that they score off the bench? Uh, thanks for giving me a few minutes to enjoy this win. I'm already worried about uh, Tony Parker and all their great players. Uh, you have to guard them. The good thing about it, they're only allowed to play five at the same time. And we are too. So both teams are really good. Both teams play hard. Both teams have great experience. So it's going to be a great series. Gary George, Inland Valley News. Coach, back here, up top. There yep. you go. Coach, talk about what what did it mean winning that last game, game five at home, and the momentum that you guys gathered and brought it in here. Talk about you know that momentum factor that you demonstrated tonight. Well, the, the good thing about the game game five win was the we missed an opportunity in game four. You know, the series was uh, very unique in that way. Uh, both teams uh, blew an opportunity to close out a game. Uh, both teams uh, beat each other pretty bad one game. I thought tonight's game was one of our best um, executed game from both both sides of the ball. But knowing knowing the uh, how how the doc prepares. We knew that we were going to have to figure out some things as this series went along, and I thought we did that. Coach, you, uh, you, you've mentioned the unsung heroes, your bigs, your defense, leadership, so on and so forth. And I know you don't care about perception from the outside, but do you believe that you guys are, are misunderstood as, as some sort of two-man show without any set offense or, or anything really of substance going on other than those two guys? You know, we, we really don't worry about what they say and, you know, about our offense, this and that. We, you know, we were third in the league in scoring, I think, and third in, in field goal percentage. I think that was been for three consecutive years. We had a bad six or seven minutes in a game three or a game four. And, and the Clippers had a bad three minutes in game five. And they, I think they led the league in scoring. That happens. Uh, we, we don't get down on what people say about us. We're focused and we, we know that we're not a perfect team and we don't claim to be. We don't tell the world that look at us. We just play basketball. We play it as hard as we can. Uh, we try to play with uh, the, the uh, very limited mistakes, but what we do try to do is play with effort every time. Russell is an effort player. He's a winner and he plays hard. Uh, Kevin does the same. Down the line, Nick, Fish, Pert, Steven, CB, it's the whole team. And that's what we build our organization around is hard work and coming in and doing it every day. And there's no surprises with us. We tell you what we we tell you what we do, and we're not trying to, to trick you guys. All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks. You guys have a good night. Appreciate it. Doc, considering the uncertainty of the future, how different was what you had to say to those guys tonight compared to similar situations you've been in in your career? Not different at all. Um, I told them that we're going to win it together. Um, you know. Um, you know, it was my job to, you know, try to make us better. Uh, but, you know, we have a great core. 
And uh, I told him, we're going to have our day. And uh, this is not the end. Uh, this is the beginning for us. Does reading into that, does that mean that you will be back? I had, Like I've said before, I'm under contract. I've had no plans on going anywhere. Um, so as far as I know. Doc, can you go into the fourth quarter tied. Um, yeah. what, what happened in those final 12 minutes? Well, we missed a lot of shots, and they made a lot of shots. You know, the old adage, it's a make-miss lead. Well, that came true tonight. You know, uh, we did. We, we, we lost Durant three times, uh, which should never happen, but it did. Um, you know, I actually personally thought at halftime uh, we never got our energy back. Uh, I don't think it was the fourth quarter. You know, to me, in the fourth quarter, they had cut the lead. It was the third quarter uh, to me to change the game. And then even the second half of the second quarter, uh, they got them back in the game. Um, I thought we came out with a lot of emotion to start the game. Didn't know if I really liked it, to be honest. Um, you know, I actually turned to one of my coaches and said, I don't know if I like this because um, we better not hit a wall. And it felt like... Um, Towards the end of the second quarter, we never got our energy back to the way we played for the first quarter and a half. And, uh, you know, we tried. That's all you can do. Dean Blemons, News 9. Coach, if Serge Ibaka is healthy, is Oklahoma City good enough to, to, to win it? It wouldn't be a surprise to you at all? Yeah, I, I thought um, the West was, is good enough to win it. <laughs> really, and I'm not kidding. All eight teams. Uh, and I'm not joking. I, I think it's that good. Uh, you know, not taking anything away from the East teams. I mean, Miami is the champion until somebody beats them, all right? And, and they're going to be a tough out. Um, I, You know, Indiana, to me, is going to be hard for Miami. I think people have been on them, but uh, before the year, they wanted home court in the Eastern Conference Finals. They have it. Um, but I just think that the two teams in the West are, are very good. Uh, Pop and what he's done um, – to uh, with his team after you know they basically got off the mat you know they had a winnable game in game six uh, lost it they've recovered they're better they're healthy uh, and I personally think they're the team they're on the mission uh, but I think with or without surge uh, and they need surge obviously um, Oklahoma they have the guy named Durant and Westbrook it gives them a fighting chance Doc, can you, you talk specifically about emotions of Chris Paul and another yeah. time he didn't get a chance to get to the Western Conference Finals, but how, how, how do you feel for him? And how well, it's just this time, as far as I'm concerned. I don't look at another time for him. This is his first time. You know, uh, you know, he, he got out of that first round advance. We had a chance in this, this series, clearly. Um, you know, I just feel awful for him, just point blank, I do. Um, he's the spirit of our team. And right now, his spirit is broken. You know, um, he's going to have all summer uh, to work and get ready for next year. You know, um, but he'll be back. He'll be ready. He'll be better next year. Uh, he knows me now. He knows our system now. And I think all our guys do. Uh, so he'll be off and running. Um, he has a great family. Uh, and then he has great teammates. So there's a lot of people around him. Um, you know, I just feel bad for him because he's the guy that always, you know, puts everything on his shoulders, and I'm sure he will uh, this summer. Yeah, he took it hard. He took it very hard. Hi, Coach. Stephanie Elam with CNN. Throughout this entire saga, yeah. I've talked to many analysts, former players, coaches, and they have said that you were the right coach to carry the team through this yeah. brouhaha. What do you make of that, and what do you think it is about you that puts you to be that man? I, I really don't, uh, and I've said this before, and I'm not trying to you know, show humility or anything like that. I think any coach in this system would have been the right coach, the right man. I just think uh, you, you had to be. You know, It's not like we had a choice in it. Um, none of us was chosen for this you know none of us you know sign on for this but this is what happened and you know the way i looked at it it was my job uh to do uh everything that i thought was right and i, I guarantee i made a lot of mistakes in this as well um you know i just wish i still wish i could have protected the guys more you know it was a lot of stuff doc when the brakes are beating you how tough was it to deal with the frustration of you and your team late in the game 
when the, you just, you know, you, you just keep fighting, you know, uh, no victims. You know, I kept telling our guys, no, don't worry. Uh, you know, we came in one time out and they were complaining about calls. And I just, listen, uh, I've only won once. Uh, and I got there another time. And both times, if I've learned anything, it's hard to win. It's just hard. It is. Everything has to go right. Um, and a lot of stuff went wrong for us throughout this, and we just kept going. Um, so it, it, that's the lesson for us, that uh, you have to embrace how hard it is. You have to actually enjoy how hard it is. Um, and whoever wins it is going to say that. And that's that's all, you know, for us. I thought that was a growth for us, at least, is I think they – Understood. I don't know if we got that until the playoffs started, and that's why when I told guys before, you grow during the playoffs. Don't think you don't grow and come together. Uh, I think we start coming together. Uh, time ran out like it did. I, I I felt like we were really close to, you know, um, you know, you, you hear like coaches say, uh, you know, like I was around Coach K a lot. He was like Duke basketball. Well, you know exactly what Duke basketball is because he's been there forever. You know, early in the year I heard Clipper basketball, and I was like, "What the hell is that?" You know, uh, we're trying to we're trying to figure out what that is. And I thought doing this playoff series, we start figuring out exactly what like Clipper basketball is and will be. And um, that's. I just kept thinking, man, if we can get to a couple more games, we're, we're, we're there. You can feel it. And time ran out, you know, and that's the tough part. Simon Bowie, CBS Network News. Doc, in the last couple of hours, it's come out through Mr. Sterling's attorney that he does not intend to pay in a two and a half million, two and a half million dollar fine imposed on him. I'm not paying sure. my twenty five thousand either. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Sterling's attorney has also said that Mr. Sterling's done nothing for which he needs to apologize, and he's implied that the league should prepare itself for legal battle. If this is a prolonged issue. How does this impact you personally? What's your reaction to that? And also, how is that going to impact your ability to rebuild this, this roster in the offseason? Is it going to impact your ability to recruit people to come here and play? Um, I don't know is the answer um, on all of the above. Um, you know, um, I think I'm prepared for um, a somewhat of a messy summer, you know, um, mentally at least. Uh, I just think it... <laughs> Come on, it's going that way. Um, I have a ton of faith in our, our league that we'll try to get it straight. Um, but we'll see. And, you know, as far as the how it affects us and bringing others in, I don't even know the answer to that. Um, I just have a lot of faith. Uh, we don't have to do a lot. That's the good news. What our, our roster is pretty good, you know. So that's the only – that's like a saving grace for us this summer – Thank gosh, we don't have you know six free agents, seven free agents. You know, we don't have that, so I think that helps. But um, we'll see how it goes, and and I'll see how it goes. That was my question. Uh, all right. That long question was your question. <laughs> Jeez. Well, <laughs> Doc, did you do you feel like the Sterling saga that that dragged on your team mentally tonight? And so when you, I mean. Uh, that there might have been accumulative effects of. It, it, I think a lot of stuff. I know I'm tired. I can tell you that. Uh, I'm going to go somewhere. First of all, lose some weight. I gained like 40 pounds in this thing, I feel like. Um, and, you know, that's what I was saying earlier. I, You know, that was what I was really trying to do throughout this is try to, like, uh, bridge. You know, I felt like I had to try to protect our guys. Uh, the playoffs are hard enough without any of this stuff. So, uh, but I, I just don't want, I want to give the respect to like Oklahoma, they beat us, you know, and I don't want us to use, we just can't be that, you know. It, 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 sure, it played a part somewhat. It had to, all right. Um, but Oklahoma beat us fair and square. Uh, and we just have to learn from that. And I think all of us will learn from all of this, you know, so. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.
What is, what is this playoff stretch done to you guys mentally and emotionally? And now that it's over, I guess, what are you feeling and, and thinking? <clears throat> Disappointed. Um, I just feel like um, could have could have been a very different series. You know, with just a couple small things. Um, but you know, proud of proud of uh, how how guys handled handled themselves throughout this this season and, and also the playoffs. Um, faced a lot of a lot of clutter, and um, I thought we handled it handled it well. Yeah, um, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, you you don't get a chance to be on uh, teams like this that often, you know. <clears throat> And uh, Oklahoma City absolutely deserves it. Uh, we had a really, really good team, a great team. And, you know, before the game, you know, Doc talked about it. And I told somebody at halftime, it's crazy. You play all season long. And just the last few games, we really started to figure out who our team was and how to play. And it's crazy that it's over because, uh, man, we, we, we really do have a great team. You know, collective group of players, not just me and Blake or me, Blake and DJ. And it's just tough to uh, realize that it's over again. Uh, Chris, does going into next season, uh, does it put any more pressure on you to get out of the second round uh, for next season in your preparation off season? I'm gonna prepare for every off season like I always do. Uh, this ain't tennis. You know, I mean, it ain't just me. Uh, we don't play one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, it's not just to get out the second round. It's to win a championship, you know. So uh, I don't know anybody in our league that plays for the finals, for the Western Conference finals. That's that's not enough. As back-to-back -back games, you had double-digit leads that ended up disappearing. Did you see any similarities between those two games as far as your execution once you had those leads in hand? Yeah, we definitely got to execute better. Uh, our defense... You know, needed to be better, but uh, that's a good team over there. And you know, Katie and and Russ are tough enough to guard as it is. And then when they just start living on the free throw line, you know, um, I had a big part to do with us losing Game Five. You know, but you know, tonight and the last game, those two shot more free throws than our whole team. You know, so it, it gets tough when you know they putting them on the line every time down. Guys, Doc indicated that you were seen kind of spent, especially in the second half, and it seemed like Oklahoma City came out just the opposite to begin the second and all the way through. Was that the case? And if so, was it just a matter of being drained through all this mess? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, I thought we just we just got stagnant, and um, you know they came out and. and Executed. I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was energy. I don't know. I don't know. We uh. We just didn't execute. You know, we we. We just kind of got away from what made us successful, um, and and they didn't. They did what they were supposed to. Chris, what was said in the locker room after the game tonight? Um, I don't know. I don't remember. It was pretty emotional. So. Chris, uh, over here, the, the uh, play with the uh, offensive foul, he passed off to uh, DeAndre for the dunk, and it was wiped out. Can you talk about that play? Yeah, I, I haven't seen it again. Uh, I thought it was Steven Adams that was about to land on me, but some of the guys said it was Nick Collison, and Monty McCutcheon said I grabbed his leg, so I'll look at it, you know, but ain't going to do nothing for us now. For, for both you guys, Doc said he, he did his best to try to protect you, but how much did all this off-the-court stuff actually weigh on you day in and day out, game in, game out? I think it only affected us one game. You know what I mean? It's that game in uh, Golden State. You know, but all in all, we, w we were focused. We were locked in. A uh, few mistakes here and there <clears throat> cost us this series. And, you know, Doc preached to us all season long, starting training camp, how... You know, when it gets to the playoffs, 
Uh, it's all about execution and one or two mistakes, and it's over. Hey guys, when when you um, when you look back on the season, is there like a resentment that this that what happened with your owner sort of overshadowed what you guys were doing in the playoffs and what you did this season? Tell you the truth, we don't think about that. You know what I mean? Like that's the least of our worries right now is is him. We just lost a damn series. We, I'm sorry, but we we don't care about that. Um, do you? No, I mean I I, I I said this before, but I you know I never really. When I came out and, and, and laced up for a game and, and was playing, I, I didn't put much thought into him. You know, I, I play for my teammates. I play for <coughs> fans, people that are that are working for us. And I mean, it's just like somebody that, that I never really knew. It's the last thing on our mind. We're giving them too much attention as it is. Hey, Chris, these last two days for you, how were you able to recover from game five? And, I mean, what did you do these last two days? Um, probably the toughest thing basketball-wise it is that I, I've ever been through in that, uh, I don't know, I felt like the only way it could get out of my mind was to play again. And, uh, you know, I got a great group of teammates who texted me all night last night and yesterday. And uh, that, that's going to hurt for a while because we should have been here up 3-2, you know, with a chance to close it out. And it's a long summer, I'll tell you that much. This question um, is for both of you. A lot of people have said Doc is the man that needed to be there for you during this series, going through this whole thing with all the stuff that was outside of the court. Can you talk a little bit about what Doc has meant for the team during this entire playoff season? I think he's been he's been great. I mean, he did everything he could. He, uh, you know, he, he kind of guided us, um, but at the same time, he didn't really know how. And I think he 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 said that to us. You know, he and this was a, a weird situation for everybody. Um, but I mean, he prepared us for every game. Our coaching staff prepared us for every game. Um, like CP said, I mean, they, from the beginning training camp I remember them talking about the little things you know it's going to be one it's going to be one small thing and, and you're going to wish you had it back um, but you know in this case you know we as a team just we didn't we, we there was real small things um, it wasn't huge glaring ones it wasn't um, it wasn't that we didn't come to play we just you know just didn't didn't put 48 minutes together and that's what you got to do uh, Blake the the uh, responsibility or responsibility you talked about uh, just playing for people you know in the organization and maybe too for you know the city the way people have kind of gotten behind this team in the last few weeks are are you feeling any of that too right now I mean it is you know beyond I mean you've been eliminated from the playoffs before does this feel different in any way man it hurts uh, it hurts each time I mean I, I don't know if this, is, this feels any different I, I uh, you know, we really appreciate the support from everybody. I mean, everybody, our fans were great. Um, they, you know, they came out, especially you know, after the whole the whole deal. They they did a tremendous job, and um, just wish we we could have given them more. Guys, if we get to the start of next season and Mr. Sterling still owns the team, is that acceptable for either of you guys? Will you? Is that an acceptable way to play under his ownership, or will the players possibly consider taking some type of action? Yeah, mm -mm. we can focus on that now, but no. Uh, mm -mm. You had spectacular offensive game the last time out in the city, and it was kind of a different way for you tonight. Just describe your game and what you were feeling out there. Uh, just trying to find a way to win. Uh, they did a good job of, uh, you know, putting two guys in, in front of me. My job was trying to find an open guy. Uh, Russell, how would you describe your team performance tonight? Uh. Great. Uh, I thought we did a great job of sticking together. I thought our bench came in um, and did a amazing job of helping us, you know, get through this room. And I also thought Kevin was consistent, you know, all, all, the whole game. I mean, he rebounded well, did a great job of uh, keeping us together. Dean Blevins, News 9, Oklahoma City. Uh, Kevin, the coach was talking about late in the game how you were doing a good job of getting the ball in good places and some of the things you talked about after after a shoot around today can you describe how that how that went this evening uh yeah you know i just 
I was disappointed um, game five, you know, how bad I was I was and, and, and being forceful and cutting. So I just try to, you know, uh, be conscious of, you know, cutting hard and, and, and running everything uh, extremely fast with pace. And um, tonight my teammates did a great job of screening for me. And um, Russ did a great job of setting me up, Russ and Reggie and, and Fish. So I just got to finish, you know. So I, I just tried to stay stay with it no matter what. I started off slow, but it's not how you start. It's how you finish. And I just try to, you know, stick with it. Back. For East Lee, Sports Exchange, how big of a factor was Reggie with Serge going down? Um, he was huge. I think Steven was huge. Um, our bench came in and did a great job. Nick um, Fish ignited us in that second quarter. So our bench was huge, and, um, you know, it was unfortunate Serge went out, but um, guys stepped up. And, um, you know, in the playoffs, that's what you need. You need everybody to step up, and uh, our bench did a great job. <laughs> where, um, Kevin, where do you – View your team as you've been to the finals with this squad before. Uh, you guys have been through the playoffs together for about four or five years. Where are you now, having gotten through this series? Do you feel like better connected? Do you feel like you're still a long way to go? Where are you with the team? Oh, well, experience has helped us out a lot. You know, just being with each other for so long um, <clears throat> definitely helps. Um, we always we got a long ways to go. We always can get better. Uh, but you know, this is a this is definitely a series that that pushed us to the brink and. You know, we was in some tough spots, and we stayed together, and we persevered, and that, that shows character. So, you know, I, you know, we've been together for so long. You know, we've, we've grown a lot, and, and guys have matured um, through every type of situation and every type of game, and, you know, that's going to definitely help us out, but we have a long ways to go. You're get Blevins, and he'll get this guy. Guys, can you talk about the, the poise and execution? There's been criticism that uh, that execution sometimes hasn't been there, and ironically, it seems like late in the game that was what may have helped you get over the hump. Is that no, fair? I just thought we we done a great job, but just sticking together. Um, you know, we called some good plays. You know, down the stretch, Kevin did a great job of setting his guys up, uh, getting the ball in the spots where he was effective, um, and we did a great job of just sticking together. Kevin, you had uh, struggled a little bit in the first quarter. How big were those three straight threes in the second to kind of get you going and get your confidence back to where it needed to be? Oh uh, yeah, it was big. You know, they messed up on their coverage on the on the one three pick and roll, and I was able to get free. And Russell made some great passes, and uh, I just you know just stayed disciplined with my shot, and it, it got me going. And um, you know that was that was a big uh, few minutes for me individually. Um, you know, they got it, got us going. We were missing shots, but you know, you see the ball go in. Uh, we started to get confident. So yeah, that was a big, uh, big stretch for us, and uh, I was glad I was able to knock them in. Uh, Ross, you get uh, Tony Parker now in the Spurs. What are your thoughts on on that matchup? Um, <clears throat> the Spurs or Tony Parker? Both. Huh? Both. Um, well, uh, the Spurs is a great team. Um, you know, they definitely have been on the road doing a great job of playing team basketball and. Uh, looking forward to it. Should be fun. For both guys, starting with Kevin, um, has it been a matter of two extremes, Memphis and these guys, in terms of the clubs you've gotten past, and does that set you up for the San Antonio series in a good way? Well, we played two great ball clubs and well coached both teams. You know, that, that you know, um, Lost some, lost some sleep at night, you know, preparing for these guys, and and you know it was emotional roller coaster sometimes, but that's what the playoffs is about, you know. Every series prepares you for the next one, uh, so you know we're excited to be moving on, but we, we we're not satisfied, you know. We're n we're not a happy team, just happy to be there, um, you know. We know it's how, how tough it's going to be, how hard it is to to advance uh, from series to series, but we're, we're looking forward to a to a great challenge coming up here soon and. Um, Clippers definitely. You got to, you know, take your head off to them. What happened in the last few weeks for them to continue to keep fighting that way and make it tough on us? It was, you know, it was kind of almost, it was almost cool to see them, you know, keep, uh, you know, standing together and everybody kind of rallying around them. So it, it was fun playing against them. Last question, <clears throat> Russell. You finished the series uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 29 points, eight assists, eight rebounds. I'm just wondering if you could describe the way you played this series. Uh, just trying to win, man. Uh, you know, I came on every night um, just trying to find a way to help us win games. Uh, you know, my teammates, 
Kevin gave me confidence of coming out and being aggressive, playing my game, um, regardless of what was going on, and, and that's all I try to do. That's Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. Oklahoma City opens its series at San Antonio on Monday night, tip-off at 8 o'clock. We'll be there for the TotallyTickets.com countdown to tip-off starting at 7 o'clock. Thanks for watching this Thunder Report. I'm David Garrett for 1077 The Franchise.